Like everything in the last few years, cities have been getting weird. Paradoxically, a lot of things in the urban fabric seem constrained and stretched at the same time. Maybe it's pandemic PTSD or a kind of political depression whose main symptoms are stuckness and boredom with the old routines because people are looking for relief, new alternatives, new openings, which makes it not at all surprising that some cities are turning psychedelic. Vancouver, British Columbia, for instance, is allowing a small psilocybin economy to emerge in brick and mortar shops as well as online. Gray markets are strange because you're being told you can and cannot do something at the same time. But buying mushrooms feels legal in Vancouver because the laws about selling them in a variety of forms from chocolates to sodas to capsules are unenforced. So Vancouver has become a mushroom mecca. Even American citizens are driving up to explore one of the largest gray market drug economies in North America, heading into retail dispensaries with names like Zoomers, the Fungi Shop, and the Medicinal Mushroom Dispensary, which will sell shrooms to any adult who checks a box on a medical history form that includes all sorts of ailments from depression to PTSD. One dispensary has stocked its shelves with other surprises as well, like LSD, mescaline, kratom, and even coca-infused tea in its charmingly laid-back cafe, which also offers non-psychedelic sandwiches and ordinary juice boxes that give you nothing more than a sugar high. How is all this happening in a sober Canadian city? Unlike the unbelievably extensive realm of the mycelium in nature, with its endlessly twisting fungal networks winding through the soil, the above ground mushroom infrastructure is pretty fragile and quite new. Within the built environment of Vancouver, the shroom economy is just a dozen or so shop fronts, some online vendors, some temporary structures at street fairs for psilocybin activists, and hundreds of posters, signs, stickers, graffiti, and other ephemera scattered through the city announcing this new mushroom renaissance. All this has attracted recreational users as well as cancer patients, depression sufferers, and addicts hoping to rewire their brains and escape the misery of legal drugs like alcohol and tobacco or the illegal ones like heroin and fentanyl. At first glance, my hometown of Austin, Texas seems quite different. Even as other cities in the U.S. are following Vancouver's lead towards decriminalization of mushrooms, Texas is stuck in the old mindset of just say no and has some of the harshest drug laws in the country. A single gram of magic mushrooms can lead to a second degree felony up to 20 years in prison, even though you can drive over the state line to Denver and the exact same substance is decriminalized. American drug laws are unpredictable from state to state, but even in a single city like Austin, Texas, you can have irrational drug policy because ketamine clinics are booming in Austin. Now, if you're not familiar with ketamine, it's marketed as the new psychedelic wonder drug for a long list of ailments. It's supposed to do the same thing, basically, as psilocybin, which is to allow the brain to rewire its bad old circuits and create new ones through the miracle of neuroplasticity. Although the evidence is spotty for some of these claims, ketamine is a legit growing business in Texas with a dozen places selling a $3,000 experience in Austin alone. And you can buy it in the mail from big companies that advertise constantly on Instagram, offering a package of sublingual tablets that will take you on a magic carpet ride on your very own living room carpet with minimal oversight if things go wrong. Now, of course, you'll probably be fine, but it's hard to imagine a stronger psychedelic experience than ketamine. 
After all, it was an illicit rave drug long before it was commercialized as a tool for anxiety, depression, and PTSD. Before that, well, it was a horse tranquilizer. So Texas is saying that the psychedelic horse tranquilizer party drug is okay, but the shrooms that grow in your backyard, well, they could land you in prison. It's absurd as public policy and cruel to the patients who need affordable psychedelic care. Vancouver is more consistent and more experimental. Long before weed was strictly legal, Vancouver allowed cannabis dispensaries to flourish for humanitarian reasons. There's something about the city that's pragmatic and open-minded when it comes to drugs. But that doesn't mean Vancouver has a utopian drug culture. As much as it experiments with the commercial possibilities of psychedelics and cannabis, it also has a rough form of addiction-fueled homelessness, in part because Vancouver is a rare place where you can survive a Canadian winter on the streets. One August, in a rare Vancouver heat wave, I was walking between mushroom dispensaries, taking notes, when I realized I was in the middle of something strange, an endless string of homeless encampments on a scale I've never seen before, not even back home in Austin, which has a terrible record of caring for the unhoused. Cutting through the heart of Vancouver like a naive tourist, I walked into a an explosion of human suffering that would seem impossible in such a beautiful city of high-rise apartments with ocean views, pristine beaches, and idyllic parks that jut into the sea. Yet it took me at least a half an hour to walk through the sidewalk encampments that were dense with people of all ages struggling to live in makeshift worlds of cardboard plastic chairs and tents, stretching for blocks through Chinatown and then west down Hastings Street. Random household goods, sometimes on sale in a kind of miniature flea market, were stacked on the pavement along with meager possessions in bags and backpacks. Cops were everywhere. Every intersection for half a mile had six police cars just parked, watching, not really doing anything as far as I could see except monitoring the scene of unlucky bodies sprawled on plastic tarps or in wheelchairs with dangling purple feet that looked like they were on the verge of amputation. I shouldn't have been surprised. Wealth and suffering are often intimately bound. But as someone with an outsider's vision of Canada as a gentler nation, I was rattled by the contrast between the rough streets and the groovy, friendly mushroom dispensaries that I was trying to research. I felt like a child lost in an urban forest on the way to the enchanted castle of psilocybin. It was sobering to see a whole neighborhood given over to addiction on my first day researching this new psychedelic economy. The insanely powerful drug fentanyl, 50 times stronger than heroin, is driving much of the suffering. But in keeping with Vancouver's realism about drug policy, the, the city's starting to give out legal doses under a doctor's care because, you know, prohibition never works, especially with something like fentanyl whose low-cost potency is seductive to dealers and users alike, even though it's deadly when the dose is even slightly wrong. Mushrooms are another story altogether. According to researchers, they are the safest recreational drug. Serious problems are exceedingly rare. In the shops in Vancouver, including some that are right near this homeless encampment, they are imparted with an almost wholesome vibe, often with an emphasis on the health and healing qualities of so-called plant medicine. Shrooms are presented neatly, professionally, in fancy packaging, like slick nutritional supplements or herbal medicines, 
which makes sense. Research is telling us that mushrooms could ease some of the traumas that lead to heavy drug use, as well as helping people with addiction itself. It's even possible that the psilocybin economy could help the very people living impossible lives on the streets of the city, just outside of these dispensaries. Not that the mushroom scene is perfect in Vancouver. You quickly realize that the cool young people who work in the dispensaries have pretty limited knowledge about the products other than the potency. And some of the products are astonishingly potent. Keep in mind that the microdosing capsules start at 50 milligrams, which most people don't even feel, and it's not really enough to create hallucinations. But then try to imagine what it means to take a hundred times that amount in what's known as the heroic dose of five grams. And that amount is available in a single chocolate bar. But you know, people have different tolerances and in the dispensaries, at least you know exactly what you're getting. You can take a very precise amount with great care, like any other medication. So what happens next for places like Vancouver, Oakland, Denver, Washington, DC, and others that are exploring the potential of psychedelic drugs? Will the mushroom economy spark a psychedelic way of imagining and experiencing the contemporary city? something that the experimental architects of the 60s might have uh, appreciated? Could it lead to new forms of liberation and joy, dripping with updated versions of the hippie aesthetic? I wondered if a kind of psychedelic urbanism could provide a counterpoint to the dominant strains of urban neoliberalism. And maybe psychedelics could spark a reimagining of our cities. They might be a way out of depression, addiction, and trauma for individuals, but also a way out of collective patterns that can zap a city's soul, routine, dullness, ugliness, spiritual emptiness, feelings of disconnection, and joyless architecture. Maybe. I certainly hope so. But the real story of the mushroom economy, I think, is going to be less dramatic in the short term. It seems likely it will follow the path of cannabis dispensaries in that it'll be quietly subsumed into the business landscapes that control the distribution of lucrative drugs, such as the opioids, the SSRIs, the benzos, and now THC. Mushrooms will become just another product and eventually it'll be available even in, in convenience stores like marijuana in Florida. The market for psychedelic medicine is huge after all. It's expected to hit 10 billion by 2027, helped by this trend towards legalization or decriminalization in many states. So my argument is that shrooms probably won't transform the modern city in the short run, but they could certainly transform individual lives and ease some real suffering. It seems very likely that they will help people with depression, especially treatment-resistant depression, in a way that pharmaceuticals have not. There's no doubt Texas is doing it wrong. Incarcerating people for mushrooms is cruel and arbitrary. In a state where psychedelic drugs like ketamine are sold in clinics with little oversight, Besides, even if Austin or other Texas cities change their laws, it's not going to turn them into some kind of tripped out reincarnation of Haight-Ashbury in the 1960s. Allowing a psilocybin economy in Texas would have the same impact as ketamine clinics on the urban landscape, which is that most people wouldn't even notice it. Legalizing mushrooms will become a business opportunity for some, a tax-generating proposition for others, and a life-changing therapeutic experience for potentially thousands of Texans. Not to mention a pleasurable trip for a lot of folks who want to experiment with new ways of experiencing the world. 
But first we have to decriminalize nature, as it were, and restore mushrooms to the legal status they had before the Nixon administration demonized and restricted psilocybin, even for researchers. Cities like Vancouver and others are trying to undo the damage of this half century of psychedelic prohibition, which kept powerful medicines off the market and out of the hands of people who needed help or simply wanted the freedom to feel how they want to feel. It's time for a new trip. The whole subject is so new that research is scarcely begun. The psychedelic people claim that theirs is the real world, that the straight or square world is unreal. Be that as it may, and for better or for worse, the evidence is overwhelming that in terms of the number of people involved, especially young people, the psychedelic world is growing and growing rapidly.